Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to tell you how I got bit by the Winlink whitelist and how you can avoid such trouble. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So most of you are probably aware that uh, back on Christmas Day 2020, we lost both internet and cell phones uh, after the Nashville explosion. So after losing uh, my internet and cell phone, I started relying on ham radio to communicate. Now I was not only using that to communicate with other hams, but I was also using that to communicate with non-hams as well. And one of the biggest uh, tools that I used during that uh, entire outage was Winlink. However, I ran into one little issue with Winlink and I wanted to make you guys aware of it and how you can overcome that uh, if you understand how to utilize the whitelist. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and let me walk you guys through a few of these little details. Okay, so before we get going here, I do want to show you where a lot of this information came from. If you go over to winlink.org, and then uh, from their homepage, you can simply click on this book of knowledge right here. Once that page loads up, you can scroll down to where you see this how-to recipes. So let's go ahead and click on that how-to recipes. You'll scroll down the page and you'll see this link here, how to manage your whitelist, uh, spam.control. So if we click on that, uh, this gives you uh, all of the information or at least the vast majority of it uh, right here in this one document. Now, I had read through this document, but it had been a little over four years. In fact, I had a printout of this page uh, in a three ring binder that I keep in the shack. I went back afterwards and looked and that was dated October of 2016. So part of this is my own fault for not coming back and staying current uh, with revisions as they came out. And one of the things that got me, I'm gonna scroll down this page just a little bit here. And I wanna point out this right here. Let me make that a little bit larger on the screen so you guys can read that a little bit easier. Your whitelist is only maintained for a period of time and purged at the end of that period. The period is currently set at six months. Well, I didn't know that the whitelist got purged after six months. So I had in the past, probably four or five years ago, made some of the changes that I'm going to show you guys how to do today but because I didn't realize it was getting purged, that information was actually not on my whitelist when I needed it. So it is something that you're going to have to kind of stay on top of. I'm working on a script that uh, is going to auto update your whitelist for you. And hopefully I can bring that to you guys uh, in another week or so. So let's go ahead and head over to a blank page here so I can kind of walk you through it. Now, one of the cool things that the creators of Winlink did is they gave us a way to bypass the spam control filters and get through every single time. So let's say you're sending an email to uh, someone with a Winlink account and you're using an internet based account like Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo or something like that. If you simply put forward slash forward slash WL2K as the first thing in the subject line, you will get through uh, the spam control filters and your message will definitely get delivered even if you're not on that particular radio operator's whitelist. Now, the other thing to note is if you send an email to somebody from Winlink, so let's just say I send a Winlink message to jason at gmail.com. Well, that jason at gmail.com, because I've sent an email to them, 
automatically gets added to my whitelist. So when they reply to me, it's going to come back through. And 98% of the time, this works. In a couple of minutes, so I'm going to show you how it doesn't work, or may not work at least, when it comes to sending text messages to mobile devices. Before we get to that though, I wanna show you how to actually manage your whitelist, uh, how to view it and then how to add to or subtract from your whitelist. Uh, so anytime you're dealing with your whitelist, you're going to send the message to system. Uh, so in the, in the uh, two line where you would normally put an operator's call sign, just put system. For the subject of that email, you're going to put whitelist. Uh, and then in the body of the email, well, this depends on what you want to do. So if you just sent an email that had list in the body, uh, then give it a few minutes and you make another uh, connection to a gateway, then the, the WinLink system is going to return a list of all of the emails that are currently on your whitelist. So that'll let you uh, see what's on there at this particular moment. Now, let's say you want to add someone to your whitelist. You'll simply put accept colon and then an email address out beside it. So in this case, I would say to accept all messages from jason at gmail.com. Uh, similar to that, if you want to block a particular email address, let's say somebody keeps sending you large attachments uh, that's taking you forever to download and you've told them, but uh, they keep sending the, uh, the email messages anyway. Well, you can simply put reject in, uh, in a message and send it out to the system with the subject of whitelist and this would stop uh, any messages from jason at gmail.com from coming in. One other thing you can do, let's say you have added them in the past, but now you want to remove them. You can just use the delete command in that body. So delete colon space and the email that you want to use. Now, I want to show you something else that is possible. Uh, not necessarily recommended, but it is possible. If you take off the first portion of the email and the at symbol, and you just say accept colon and give it a domain name, such as gmail.com, any email coming from gmail.com would come through uh, bypass, uh, bypass all the spam control filters and be delivered to your WinLink account. I do not recommend doing this for a domain like gmail.com. You run the potential of getting just flooded with emails that we really don't need coming into our WinLink account. However, this can be useful uh, in certain situations. Now, let's talk about cell phones and sending text messages to a cell phone. Many of you know that we can send uh, a message or an email rather to a 10 digit phone number at uh, some domain and get it delivered to a mobile device as a text message. So let's say 555-123-4567 at vtext.com. If you sent that out, then it would be delivered to this phone number. Of course, fictitious here, but you get the idea. Uh, and then it, you put the you put the at vtex.com behind it, and it would go to that uh, phone number as a text message. And everything, uh, this works very well. Now, this particular address is for Verizon customers. So uh, any Verizon customer, you can send it to their phone number. You put the at vtex.com behind it, and it'll get delivered as a text message. Now, here's something that a lot of people don't realize, and this is where I got bit uh, during that outage. Sometimes, not every time, and I'm still trying to figure out why it happens sometimes and not other times and, and what the variable is there that, that changes this. 
sometimes when that message comes back through, it will come through as vzwpix.com. And this is where the problem comes in. You've sent it to this address here. So this address gets automatically added to your whitelist. However, when the reply comes back, it comes back from a different email address. And because this email address isn't in your whitelist, well, the spam filters won't allow it to be delivered back to your inbox. So if you remember a while ago, I told you that you could accept uh, entire domains uh, or add entire domains rather to your whitelist. That's what I've done in this particular case is I have added vzwpix.com. That way, if I send a text message to a Verizon customer and they reply to me, I'm guaranteed that this is going to get back through. Now, there's a couple of ways you can figure, uh, figure out which uh, domains to add to your whitelist, uh, because this not only happens with Verizon, but it can also happen with AT&T as well. Let me jump over and show you guys another website. This website is freecarrierlookup.com, and I've got to hand it to one of my patrons. I can't remember exactly which one it was. Uh, I apologize, but uh, one of my patrons alerted me to this particular site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to key in uh, a fictitious phone number. I have no idea whose phone number I just pulled up there, but uh, we're gonna roll with it. Uh, I'm gonna enter the spam bot information and I'm going to hit search. Now what this is going to do is it's going to tell me that the carrier is Verizon. So maybe you've got a friend or a family member and you're not real sure who their wireless carrier is. Uh, this will give you some good information here. Um, and then we've, it lists down here both the SMS gateway address and the MMS gateway address. So you want to make sure that you've added both of those domains to your whitelist to make sure that those uh, messages would come back through and not get blocked out by the WinLink whitelist. So I hope you'll take the time to go ahead and manage your own whitelist and add any uh, numbers or domains that you may need uh, in the event of an outage like we went through back this past December. Going ahead and taking care of it now ensures that you'll be able to get messages uh, both into and out of your WinLink account. Now, there are other things that you can do. For instance, uh, I ran into this problem uh, trying to communicate with my mom uh, during that outage. So the workaround that I used is I sent her an email address to her Gmail account, and then I sent her a text message to her phone uh, just alerting her that I had sent that to her Gmail account. My mom's not one of those people that checks her uh, email on a regular basis, so alerting her via text message allowed her to go and look at it on her Gmail account. Then once she replied to that, that message was obviously allowed back through my WinLink uh, spam control filters because I had sent it to her, so it had automatically added that. Well, guys, I hope you find this helpful, and I hope it prevents you from running into the same issues that I did. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.